Hello guys, Winston here. We need to have a talk. A couple days ago, the Shapeoko community got a blunt reminder about shop safety and CNC ownership. Instagram user PK Design Lab shared a scary encounter he had where something had gone wrong and what he was cutting ended up on fire. The particulars of that incident aren't clear, but this isn't the first time something like this has happened. Back in 2016, Darwin Garage posted a video showing what happened when his workpiece came loose. It started getting dragged by the cutter, all the while building up heat from friction. In the video, you can see a boatload of smoke pouring out from the stock and even a glimpse of embers and flames. Mistakes happen. We may not tighten something down correctly, the machine might skip a step, a belt could snap, V-wheels could get jammed by chips, or a glitch might cause your computer to lose connection with the machine. Any number of factors might trigger a catastrophic chain reaction with your CNC. I think most of us can admit we've walked away from our machines at one point or another, or in my case, all the time, and though I've always advised people who leave their shops to be in a position where they can respond to an emergency, I don't think I've adequately expanded on what that means. So let me start off by saying that I too almost suffered from a rapid unscheduled conflagration. I alluded to that fail before on Instagram, but this week's events have made me realize just how close to disaster I came, and that's something I think needs to be shared fully and transparently. So although it really pains me to edit this video, let's dissect my near disaster. Back in January, I was cutting a batch of oak pieces for an award plaque, Project 110 for those of you keeping track. I had a stable workflow established, load a plank of wood, clamp it down, hit run, come back 40 minutes later, repeat. I got complacent. I was using two clamps, and having failed to tighten one of them sufficiently, my wooden stock began to move. As it moved, it caused the machine to lose steps. My Shapeoko started drifting further and further off course. Eventually, it freed itself from the stock and started moving over the open wasteboard where there was nothing in the way except for a clamp. And of course, my Shapeoko went straight for it. The end mill went head to head against the metal in the clamps, making a rather nice shower of sparks. Had I not had a dust boot keeping my work area clean, there would have been a high risk of ignition. Between the first signs of trouble and my arrival, 90 seconds had elapsed. Now, I didn't show up in my garage based on dumb luck. I had been monitoring my Shapeoko remotely the whole time. I use a vintage iPod Touch paired with the ManyThing app as a ghetto baby monitor. In my room, I have an old Android phone showing me the feed from the iPod while I work. I glanced down at my phone about a minute after the start of the mishap, noticed that the wood was askew, and made a beeline for the garage. At the time, I had no idea just how bad the situation had been. It wasn't until I reviewed the footage that I realized that something could very well have caught on fire. Let's be honest, CNC can be a long, tedious process. People will inevitably turn their backs on their machines or leave the room. That part's probably not going to change, but there are some precautions that I think are worth investing in. The first line of defense against disaster is you, the meat servo with the ability to halt the machine. You need to be able to observe your machine at any time. You can jury-rig a system like mine with old mobile devices or use any number of internet-connected cameras on the market today. And the ability to respond is essential. If you decide to put up a live feed of your CNC while you drive to the hardware store and something goes wrong, being a passive observer is pretty useless. You're in big trouble unless you have a plan B. Even though I was home at the time of my mishap, my response time still left a lot to be desired. What's now standard operating procedure for me is to remote control my G-Code streaming laptop from my bedroom. Being able to hit pause is the single best thing you can do in an emergency because it removes the cutter from your workpiece. For remote PC access, I use TeamViewer, but you can use whatever you want. Other options for safing your machine include using a Wi-Fi enabled switch to kill power to your router and CNC, and you should do it in that order. If you can only plug one device into a controlled outlet, it should be the router. I don't care if your CNC ends up ramming an end mill against something and breaking the cutter, a non-rotating end mill is a safe end mill. If your switch has the current capacity to power both the router and the CNC, use a power strip to get both of them downstream of your kill switch. Nowadays, I keep the volume on my remote monitor just high enough for me to recognize a problem by ear if I'm not near the garage. Keep in mind that this is the bare minimum you should be doing to protect yourself and your machine. But humans in the loop are still fallible. I've never drawn attention to this in my videos, but I do employ a plan C. This is a fire extinguisher ball. You may have seen these in various clickbaity videos or on what's inside. It's basically a firecracker encased in a dry powder fire suppressant wrapped up with a fuse. If fire touches the ball, it lights the fuse which triggers the explosive release of the fire suppressant in a 1 meter radius. JPL Richard uses a different system in his shop slash shed. And of course, a smoke detector is always good to have around. These are the kinds of last line defenses I would recommend people look into if you frequently walk away from your CNC. That's not to say these measures make it 100% risk free, 
I'm going to follow the manufacturer's guidelines here and say that remaining with your CNC is the safest way to use it. Failing that, you should take the time to set up a system so that you can be aware of what your CNC is doing wherever you are. Furthermore, have a plan to respond to mishaps in a timely manner. Shop safety is not a glamorous thing, and the teachable moments that might help others take action can be embarrassing to share. But I think this is an important conversation to be having, and if you don't have measures like this in place, I hope I've at least gotten the gears turning in your head. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you have any risk mitigation strategies of your own, please do share them in the comments down below, and I'll be back with my regularly scheduled CNC content next week.